I feel really blessed that from way, way back, I've always felt really good about sex and very innocent about it and, uh, and, and love it. I think it's wonderful. And, and I just wanted to share that I have had, I've had this fantasy in the past that I wish that I could uh, be in sexual union constantly. Uh, like, as you described, but. Yeah. And of course, it's on a, my awareness and experience is on a totally different level. Yeah. But it's, at least it's there. Yeah. You know, it's the beginning. Yeah. The thing is, when it comes to sexuality, we often connect with that, particularly guys, <laughs> connect with the idea of having sex constantly, right? But um, to actually get to that place at a soul level rather than a physical level takes dealing with a lot of emotions. And that's something that we'll talk about today in more detail. Without dealing with the emotion, um, all we're doing is really engaging in a physical act rather than actually a soul act. And a lot of times today, our desire for sex is often um, based around injuries. And we'll, come, we'll look at that, how that's based around injuries many times. And, and how we can actually remove those injuries from ourselves so that we can actually engage sexually with our soulmate permanently. But it won't be always physically, if that makes sense. It'll be an exchange of sexual energy cycling through yourself and your soulmate constantly, but it won't always have a physical expression. And there's often that misunderstanding. Well, I, I, when I felt these things, it felt like it was much deeper than physical. Exactly. And, yeah. and I've had periods of my life when I felt extremely connected to humanity. Yeah. And, and I felt a sense of oneness and, and I loved everyone. Yeah. And and I wanted it to be on all levels, and it, it's impossible to do it on the physical with everyone. Exactly. And, and it becomes very problematic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we usually have a lot of diseases associated with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, so a few things to remember at incarnation. At incarnation, these souls, of which you were one before you came to earth, did not have a self-awareness. At that time, you also did not have a sexual identity. You didn't realize your own self, and you didn't realize yourself as an individual. You also didn't know yourself as a half of a soul, right? At that particular point when you incarnated, unless your parents knew, you, knew that there were soulmates. Now, because most parents on earth have no idea about soulmates, of course, they never consider that there is perhaps a soulmate, and so that emotion doesn't flow through them, so it can't flow, flow through you once you incarnate. So when we separate from our soulmate during the process of incarnation, the time, at the time of separation, there is no knowledge of that separation. There is no consciousness of that separation. It is only after the separation occurs and when we start to be individualized, when it, in other words, when we come to Earth, that we start having a consciousness of ourselves. So it's very important to understand that there is no consciousness of the soul separation in the soul half when it first incarnates. And there's a very good reason why that's the case. Because if, if, if it was conscious of it, it would actually go through many terrible emotions right at that point before it even incarnated. Does that make sense? So to incarnate from a not unconscious state, remember the soul still has personality, but is unconscious of itself. When it incarnates, that's the process of creating consciousness of itself. In other words, the process of incarnation is essential for you learning that you're an individual and can exercise your free will. But after a while, you start learning actually that you want to connect to one other person and you want to have this other connection. And that's when you start developing this longing inside of yourself that starts growing for a soulmate. Does that make sense? Now, the reason why I'm bringing up soulmates in this sex and sexuality discussion is because in the end, God intended that you have sex with your soulmate. And in the end, God, in fact, intends 
if you progress spiritually through all the spheres of the seven spheres and then you go above that to the 21st sphere and eventually you go into a soul union state where you reunite with your soulmate on every level and in that level you are one soul again and you're not two separate beings you are one soul that can express itself however it desires.